We believe in your greatness. It's what we're built on. It's who we are. There are no limits to what you can accomplish. Because you already have the magic. You already have the power. You already have the ability to do it. You just have to do it. You have the key to success. Well, good evening or good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you're tuning in from. Uh, welcome. Uh, my name is Andrew Weissman, Vice President of Market America Worldwide and Shop.com, and also a very proud unfranchised owner. Um, and I'm joined tonight by um, some very special friends, partners, and uh, fellow unfranchised owners. And tonight, and I'll introduce them momentarily, but, um, you know, the last time we've been able to get together at a major event, whether it be the International Convention of the World Conference, of course, was the 2020 World Conference that was held in Miami. So we're very much looking forward to and anxiously awaiting um, August 26th to the 28th. We're all going to come together and celebrate the next chapter of our entrepreneurial journey together in Greensboro, North Carolina at the 2021 International Convention. So we're going to talk about um, that a little bit during the next 30, 45 minutes um, while we're together tonight. Um, but I'm joined by, um, as I mentioned, very special partners. Um, the first is Beth and Pitt Black. They're national supervising coordinators. They're uh, TLS trainers. They're Nutrimetrics consultants. They're um, certified trainers. They're uh, district coordinators. They're part of the regional uh, committee there in the Southeast region. They're just phenomenal leaders and they've impacted the quality of many people's lives in many parts of the country and different parts of the world. So welcome Beth and Pitt Black, and thanks for taking the time out of your schedule to join us. Um, we also have Cullen Haskins. Cullen and Trinity Haskins are directors in the business, um, and that means they've earned $18,000 to $24,999 in four weeks. Um, Cullen, certified trainers, phenomenal people, great leaders, and, and, um, and recently, uh, Cohen took on the, the, the position of directing the entire uh, global meeting training and seminar system we call the GMTSS. And we couldn't have a better person in that position and already feeling the positive effects um, with your leadership, Cohen. So um, thank you for joining us and tell Trinity we said hello um, later on when you, when, when you see her. So any rate, so let's just get into the, in the, into the discussion a little bit here. This is going to be kind of an open discussion, um, not a really an interview, but just talking about where we are right now and, um, and what we are looking forward to. But uh, maybe Beth and Pip, if you don't mind, maybe starting out, I think it's kind of cool. There's a lot of people who don't know you, but a lot of people, of course, do know you and your story. But if you don't mind, just take a minute or two and talk about how you were originally introduced to the business and what attracted you to becoming an unfranchised owner and, and, uh, and what, and what um, the journey and uh, the result has been, how it's impacted uh, your lifestyle and what you've benefited from, uh, from that respect. Absolutely. Thank you, Andrew. And thank you for having us tonight. I'm going to actually start because it started with me. Um, I, was, <laughs> I was actually introduced to LPC3, our number one product. Uh, back in 1996, it, it, it's unbelievable when I think about how long ago that was. But in 1996, I was introduced, I was looking for a product actually for a younger son who was less than two at the time, who now has given us a grandbaby. So actually it was my cleaning service that introduced me to the product line. And then once I got involved with the product line, I was actually sharing it with a lot of my friends who were looking for natural things. I actually owned a continuing education company for health professionals. And so I was doing alternative healing education for all types of health professionals. And so I was started setting up the products, the isotonics products at those events. 
And of course that person came to me and said, oh my gosh, you would be great at this business. And I was like, I'm not looking for a business, but thank you very much. And so long story short, she did something very important that we talk about all the time. And that is get people in front of other people. Um, so she sold me a ticket and I got a ticket and I went to a seminar that was interestingly enough, very much like a hybrid of not the hybrid that we just had of a Zoom versus in person, but a hybrid of a like a product training and a basic five all in one day. And I went to that training and I heard from some other health professionals that were there. And I saw a lot of people share stories about how this business and these products have changed their lives. And I walked out of there and all I could think of was what if, what if like I had this continuing education business, I'm an occupational therapist by trade. I was a fitness professional and I knew that everything I did had no leverage. Meaning if I didn't work, I didn't get, if I didn't work, I didn't get paid. And both Pip and I had been laid off four months pregnant with our first son. And we had just purchased our first home in Florida. So we were laid off within three weeks of each other and right. from major corporate positions. And at that point, we both decided that one of us would never go back into corporate America. So I was working outside of corporate America and started my own business, but I realized I was only as good as the next sale I made or the next client I saw. And that just always made me feel like I needed more. So I didn't think I was looking, but I guess I was looking. And she heard that, picked up on that and got me to an event. Um, I'm going to let Pip jump in because it was many years later before he actually decided to actually join me in business, which I'm so grateful for. Yeah, actually, Andrew, I was in a corporate position and I really love my job. And I didn't think that, you know, there was anything outside of what I was doing that would interest me. And, you know, there came a day, and this, this is a famous story in our, in our team. Um, I drove a lot around the state of Florida for my job and spent a lot of time on the interstate. And this one morning, uh, it must've been 5 6 o'clock in the morning, I went to kiss Beth goodbye and the reason I was kissing her goodbye, because I had to give myself three and a half hours to get to Orlando because traffic is so bad. And I gave her a kiss and she rolled back over. And I said to her, boy, I wish I could roll over and go back to sleep. And she looked at me and she came back around. She looked at me and said, you can, it's a choice. And then went right back down into the sleeping position. And I left there and got in my car and drove to Orlando and I was angry with her. And then it dawned on me, she was right, it was a choice. And that was the ma one of the magic moments for us because I realized that yes, I love my job, but I love my family more. And I love spending time with my family a lot more than I love spending time with my employees. Not that I didn't enjoy what I was doing, but I realized at that point I needed to learn more about this business. And we tell people, we had a Lincoln Navigator. And if you know anything about Navigators, they have these massive consoles. We filled it up with um, CDs because that was the first step. She told me, you have to start listening to audios. Well, at the time it was CDs. So I took advantage of the time on the road by playing CDs everywhere we went. And I started listening and learning about the business on the road while I was on you know, driving in the car. And what happened was initially I was not interested, but my mind, I wasn't in the right place. My mind changed and I got in the right place. And I realized all the things that I had created in my own box, that I had to step out of that box or enlarge my box because I had no leverage. I had no time. I had the money, but I had no time. And right. for me, that became the biggest focal point is to get my time back. And so how, just out of curiosity, how long after, um, you know, you, uh, Beth really kind of initiated the development of the business and then you started to understand more, how long did it take for you to retire from your job or, or is that something that, that happened shortly thereafter? Or? Yeah, it, it was probably within three years. Wow. It became, we decided that we were going to do this together and we were going to go full bore. So what I did is I worked my full-time job, came home, spent time with the kids, put the kids to bed. And then we worked together until 
sometimes one, one thirty, two o'clock, because that was our time. And there was a probably a nine to 12 month period where I was getting about four hours sleep per night. And that's when we said, this has to stop. We have to, you know, I got to, you know, time to move on. I, I need to do this full time. And you did it. You guys have just been on a great journey and it, I know it just continues and, and uh, the freedoms that you guys have, the choices you're able to make now uh, without right. having to answer anybody, I know is a, is a feeling that most people unfortunately don't experience, but we're continuing to attract more and more people who do desire that. And, and obviously we provide the products, the tools, the training, the support, the business to enable people to, you know, to make the choice like you guys did. So congratulations on that. I'm going to come back to you, but Colin, love to hear um, a little bit about your story. I know you, you, know, you moved down to Florida not, not too long ago, but um, you know, uh, for warmer weather, maybe play more golf and fish more, but uh, talk to us about how you were originally introduced and, and how it all kind of came about. Yeah, I, I I was introduced to the unfranchised. I was uh, uh, it was an ad in the paper, and they were running an ad selling some furniture, and I happened to need some furniture for the first house I purchased. I was uh, you know 24 years old and working for a a small pharmaceutical facility in South Chicago. Uh, it's called Bayer, and and I was a maintenance guy. I loved working with my hands. I enjoyed fixing things, but I was working 12 to 16 hours a day. I was a guy that was seven in the morning. I'd start, get done at seven at night, but then they would say, oh, overtime, time and a half. And I was like, all right, yeah, let, let's go. You know, and I'd stay till 11 at night and then do it over again the next day. And, uh, and, and then uh, I, what I found out from my dad, um, he took me to lunch one day and shared he wasn't going to retire like he had been planning. He was going to have to go get another job. And he had lost three quarters of his 401k in the market in the late 90s there when there was a big, you know, market bust. And I didn't know that was possible. It's always fascinating when things happen around us that we're just oblivious to until it means something to us. And all of a sudden we're like, wait a minute, what do you mean? Like, I mean I'm putting all my money in that thing. And, and of course, there's nothing wrong with that, except is that my only plan, you know, to make sure I'm good. And, and that was my dad's only plan, basically. And so he had always been an employee his whole life, him, him and my mom. And I just remember them working dark to dark and between alarm clocks and time clocks to then get the congratulations. He's got to go get another job instead of being able to retire. And I thought you sacrificed the best years of your life, missing a lot of our stuff as, as kids growing up providing for the family. And so I, I honor my parents for that, of course, but at the same token, it, it allowed me to ask myself, what is it I really, really want out of my life uh, if money wasn't an issue? If, if there was just enough money coming in to take care of things, what would I do with my time? And it was all about spending time with my family. Trinity and I have you know, five beautiful children. And uh, at that time, all the kids were under the age of seven. And so it was definitely like herding cats at our house. And so that was exciting, but uh, never a dull moment at the Haskins household. That's for sure. But, uh, sure. you know, when that ad was in the paper, I remember reading the ad and, and checking it out. And, and then it's like, hey, do you keep your business options open? And 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 I, my initial thought was, well, yeah, you know, this is what's going on with my dad. And, and so mentally, I'm like, yeah, I keep my, you know, but but I remember leaving and, 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 and think, thinking to myself, well, I'm open, but if this is a multi-level marketing compensation business, like, you know, like just like my job at Bayer is the way it looked. I, I've been introduced to a lot of those. I looked into a lot of them. I, I, I bought products from people or services or whatever they were doing, you know, save money on your long distance phone bill from my aunt. I bought, but then it was like, hey, do you want to sell it? And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> I'm not. In, and it was really the compensation. I just, I'm, I'm the nerd getting out a calculator trying to make sure this makes sense and it adds up and, and really what do I and the team need to do? And it just didn't make sense. Mm -hmm. And so this did make sense. And, you know, after seeing it, I probably did see it like two or three times. First time caught enough attention to see it again. And then the second time, third time, then I couldn't sleep at night. You know, I was like, Oh, this is definitely radically different um, than any other compensation that I've seen. It's definitely different than my compensation at the pharmaceutical facility. That's for sure. Um, and, and so therefore, Trin and I got started, uh, built up a successful business, and we've been blessed to, with a supplemental income that's re rewarded us with time to 
spend time with our, our, our beautiful kids and raise them and be the coach and the room mom and the room dad and all these things and, and be able to volunteer and do all those things at the school without being worried about getting paid or donating the money back, getting new uniforms, whatever it took. Uh, but you have to get the money out of the way in order to enjoy those things and do those things. And that's what really excited us. I'm incredibly blessed with an amazing organization of people that uh, uh, love the products, love the business and, and continue to grow. And so that's another blessing that's come along the way too. And, and of course, being able to hang out with incredible people like you, Andrew and, and Beth and Pitt. Beth and Pipp are definitely my right and, and my left arm in the, in the region. And they do so much to support the Southeast region, just incredible drama-free people, which is what I love surrounding myself <laughs> with. So anyways, it's been a blessing. Well, we have, listen, we're, as you, you just mentioned, we've been so, you, you're fortunate in that the people that you've attracted to your own personal organization, your team, but thinking it from uh, a more general perspective at a higher level, we've been very fortunate to attract so many great people around the world. We operate in eight countries, you know, and, and, and the business is set up, um, obviously, as you guys know, and maybe people, a lot of people that are tuned in, in order for you to succeed, you spend your time, energy, and effort with other people who have a sincere desire to improve their financial position or to enhance their quality of life, right? So we end up attracting positive, you know, people who want to make something happen. And so at the end of the day, you know, we provide that system, the tools, the support, the training, and the products to enable people to, you know, uh, get the things that they want, reach their personal and financial goals. But one thing that, as you guys know, is a, is a main ingredient or a key to success within this enterprise is, is utilizing, is leveraging um, the major events. When I say a major event, I'm talking about the international convention um, or the world conference, okay? And, and I think it's cool that you, that you guys are on tonight because you just successfully did, uh, I think the first hybrid local seminar and when we say hybrid, we're talking about people being able to access the or attend the event virtually and in person simultaneously. It's a hybrid event, which is what we're going to be doing at the International Convention come the end of August, right? So I'd like to do, uh, Beth and Pip, talk to me a little bit about the first International Convention or World Conference that you attended and, and what that experience was like, what you gained from it. And, and, and of course, as a result... Why you probably haven't missed one, and and you know ensure that your people attend and your new people attend. So t talk to me about that experience. Okay, so it's kind of interesting how it started because we were actually the first year I was in business, which was 1997. My sponsor told me about the international convention in Greensboro, North Carolina, which is where we're headed in August of this year. And she told me about this event and it just so happens we were closing on a property in North Georgia in the mountains to build a log home that Friday. And so I was like, well, gosh, I can't go. But I'm, I always say business success is based on choices we make and commitments. And so I was like, how am I gonna get there? We have this closing. And so I kind of said, you know, Pep, if you could, drop me off in North Carolina after we close on the property, I could go Saturday. And so that's what we did we, along with the kids in tow. And they were only like four and five or something like that at the time. And with the kids in tow, we drove to Georgia, closed on the property Friday afternoon, drove up to North Carolina and he dropped me off at the doorstep on Saturday morning with everyone dressed in red, white and blue. And he was like, oh my gosh, I just dropped her off for a cult meeting. <laughs> I remember those days. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it was kind of wild, but the thing is I came out of that realizing that I had just found my people. And what do I mean by that? Um, basically I experienced fellowship there. And I, what I mean by that is the fact that I had always felt like this square peg trying to fit into a round hole in everything I did as an occupational therapist working for other people, going out and having my own business, somehow not, something just never seemed to fit, but I didn't know what it was. I couldn't put my finger on it. And at that event with fellowship with other people is where I realized that I was missing leverage of working together with other people and feeling that hundred percent that we talk about in our business that I had right. never seen anywhere else before. So I can honestly say kind of like Colin, I didn't quite, I, I had no business in business, honestly, at that time. I didn't understand the business plan going to that event, 
But I came out of that event knowing that I wanted fellowship. And then of course, tried to talk my husband into it, which took a number of years. Um, but Pip, I want you to talk about honestly, your first event that made the change in your mindset because that's right. big. Right, after, you know, after the audios and after getting a, the proper mindset, I wanted to go not only just because I wanted to be around the people, but I wanted to meet the people or at least see the people that I was listening to for so long. And also I realized by this time that we're all energy. And so many, so many times we're around low energy people and our vibrations get brought down because people bring us down. And I wanted to be around people like Beth said, these were my people, but I wanted to be around people who had a like mindset to bring the energy up. And so my vibration would come up. So the first time that I, I went when, you know, I was ready for this event, I was amazed. And it wasn't the train. I can't even remember, honestly, I can't remember the training as much as I remember the feeling of being there and actually seeing all these people excited and happy to be there. And I can't imagine what it's going to be like in Greensboro because we've been cooped up. And having been part of this hybrid event last weekend, you know, there was so much energy, it rose, it was unbelievable. Even though it was a local seminar and we capped the tickets at a certain amount, the energy, it was unbelievable. The after event, the love, the, it, it, the vibrations were so high, the whole collective just absolutely rose. And it's gonna be like that in August. It's gonna be, I mean, multiplied by, you know, X factor because of the amount of people, but it's, it's the energy, it's the feeling, it's being around your people, it's being around like-minded people. Instead of getting ne negative energy at work or from family or whatever, you're gonna get positive energy from people going the same direction. You know, there's, there's something you, I loved what, how you said that and Beth, Beth as well. There's just something that's just so valuable and so irreplaceable when you attend in person. You know, I often think about, a, you know, you go to a great, you know, uh, football or basketball game or a great rock and roll concert or the set, you know, the Tonight Show or Saturday Night Live. It's one thing to watch those events on TV and that's cool, it's fine, but it's a completely other ex type of an experience. It's much more enriching, much more valuable that really resonates with you that, you, that you keep with you, you know, and you can express to other people when you actually attend in person. And I agree with you that the vibration will be extremely high. August 26th to 28th in Greensboro, without a doubt. So we're looking forward to it. Colin, talk to me about your first experience at an international convention or world conference. Yeah, I, I had been in the business uh, two months and it was uh, leading into MA World Conference Leadership School back then in Miami. And so I remember uh, bringing six people with me to the event. And all I, all I remember, was us racing down to the floor and as we were running you know people were wiping out and we were jumping over them and we were like all right sorry are you okay I'll be, I'll, I gotta get down to the floor we get down to the floor we're like in the second row the second row back then it was like you know like we were in the in the JR you know a uh, splash zone of, <laughs> of spit and uh and, but we couldn't wait to be there you know and, and right. right there close to all the VIPs and all, all I can remember is like, I got to get my people that I brought with me to meet everybody. And I remember bringing them up to meet, you know, Tony and Pam Bowling, for instance, and, and just a look on everyone's face. And, and here I am acting like I know them that well, and I knew who they were, and I know their icons, but, but I really didn't know them that well personally, but just the time that they took with our people and talking to them and, and making them feel welcome. And I thought, man, see, this is what it's all about. And so it is, for me, it's always about the experience that we provide in, in that physical realm. And, and it's also about the, what we always refer to and JR teaches the seven, seven, seven people out of here think seven times, seven different ways from seven different people. And I'm to the point where I'm like, I think it's like a, a thousand, a thousand, a thousand, <laughs> because every time I hear different people speaking and training and doing things, I'm just like, Oh, that is so great. That's a great, it doesn't matter who it is. 
on our stage because we only feature people who are actually doing the work, which is super exciting. And so therefore there's always nuggets being taken, golden nuggets that I could steal to make me and our organization more valuable in the marketplace and in the world out here. And, and it is great to be around like-minded people and you know, what, what's wrong with cheering each other on and high-fiving each other and saying, you're awesome versus being like, who's trying to stab me in the back as I'm trying to work my way to the top of my, my corporate journey. I think that's weird, you know? So for the people who think that we're a little bit nuts because we're all a little too happy or encouraging of each other, I think that's fascinating, really, honestly. It's like, but it is interesting when you haven't grown up with that though. Yeah. You do kind of wonder about it, but it's completely normal in our world because that's the environment we provide for success and it's imperative for success. And so, um, we obviously catapulted from there. And the next one, I think Trinity and I had over like 35 people at it. And the one after that, there was about, I think 90 some people at and the organization, you know, continued to grow from there, which was super awesome. But we had to leverage the event. It was an epiphany for Trinity and I to think that who's going to listen to us at 24 years old anyways, when you think you're enough, you think you know enough to say, I can tell everybody what to do, but then they would hear it from Andrew Weissman and they would say, oh my gosh, that Andrew Weissman is brilliant. And, and of course I was like, I know, right? <laughs> you know, And it was like, but that's what it took was it might've been the seventh or the 15th or the 60th time that they had to hear something for like JR teaches at the billionth of a volt to go off across our cerebral cortex, right? So. That's the leverage factor, the L factor of the events and what we provide. And you know what? It's what is normal. That is really normal. It's how we've all been conditioned to learn our whole life. It's just we never stop to sit back and think about it, what's really occurring here and taking place. But uh, I love our events, and it really is the shortcut to building a, a large but sustainable organization long term. So that's it. You guys, but listen, both of you, uh, Colin and the Blacks, you know, they, you set it in motion, it carried in motion. What you did back then continues to pay you today, ultimately, you know, and those same basic principles that yield results that we know have been proven are still intact. And we've been very fortunate as a community to, to work through the global pandemic for a year and a half and be connected virtually. And we, we, we did very, very well. But once again, it comes back to there's nothing that's, that can be that can replace that in-person experience. And I just want to give you guys some information about the upcoming event, um, because it will be an event like we've never experienced before. Um, I always say that it's going to be the greatest international convention or the greatest world conference in the company's history, and it will be. Um, but it's going to be, we're, we're kind of, um, it's going to be at a much higher vibration, uh, Pip, because we have, a, we have a completely fresh new production company that we're working with. We have a great new human resource that oversees the production internally, who has a tremendous amount of experience with major productions that have been broadcasted internationally. And um, so some of these fresh thoughts, ideas, and energy that's going into this is, has already begun. And we're already um, uh, well within our planning um, already today. And it's gonna be phenomenal. I just, but a couple of things I wanna mention. Um, for every ticket that you purchased, you're gonna get a, a nice box. And in that box is gonna be, um, I think some of the new products, but don't quote me on that. I know this is being recorded, but um, there's gonna be some other gifts in there that we'll be able to use in person or if you, unfortunately can't make it to Greensboro, you'll be able to use the, the, the gifts at home. It's gonna create a lot of energy, some enthusiasm, camaraderie. Um, and one of the items in the box is also a t-shirt. And the t-shirt, it says the next chapter. And it's got our logo and it's got the, the S for shop.com and the shopping annuity. And we're all gonna wear that t-shirt on Saturday night. Cause Saturday night is gonna be um, an evening that we've never experienced before. You know, normally at an international convention, we would have a, a gala, right? A semi-formal affair where we provide awards and there's entertainment. Well, in, at this international convention, there's not going to be a gala. I think it's going to be even better because we're all going to be together, not just the 2,500 people who bought a gala ticket, but everybody's going to be together in the Coliseum. And for the first hour and a half or two hours, we're going to have a very special recognition segment 
We're gonna um, give those awards that we would normally give at the gala. We're gonna recognize the higher levels in the business. We're also gonna recognize the challenge uh, winners. And that's gonna go right into a huge celebration with live entertainment. There's be, of course, surprises. There's gonna, you can access uh, bars and drinks and there's gonna be a dance floor and it's gonna be just a lot of fun where we, we'll be able to um, raise the vibration, celebrate each other being together for the first time since World Conference 2020. And as we celebrate, uh, not just being together and not just the fact that we're fortunate enough to be unfranchised owners, but the fact that we're gonna um, continue in this journey with the next chapter and it's, it's gonna be phenomenal. Um, it's also worth noting that we actually just finalized this today. There's gonna to be a golden ticket um, that will be randomly placed in these boxes. And uh, apparently uh, if you've seen the, the movie, the, what Willy Wonka, the chocolate factory or something like that, I never saw the movie, but there's this golden ticket. And if you receive the golden ticket, okay, um, you, you, you're gonna get the following. You're going to get a $3,000 credit on account, which of course you can use toward purchasing um, uh, products, a $3,000 credit on account. You're going to get three tickets to the next um, major event, which would be, of course, the 2022 World Conference, right? And if we do a ticket promotion, whatever that promotion is, that'll be also provided. And you're also going to get VIP access. So you have VIP seating in addition to access to hospitality, which provides you with a nice catered breakfast and lunch each of the days at this international convention. So pretty cool. So if the, for the lucky ones that are gonna get this golden ticket, congratulations in advance. It's gonna make that experience in, with your attendance um, e even better. So um, it's gonna be phenomenal. Um, Andrew, if you don't mind, let's roll the video because we're really looking forward to this um, Saturday night celebration. It'll be the first time we've ever done something like this. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, and uh, listen, we don't even know what to expect. It's going to be kind of a surprise for all of us because we're kind of in uncharted water doing something we've never done before. But I know it's going to be very, very special. Um, so we're getting close toward the end here. Um, but uh, if you don't mind, I, I'd like to maybe hear, uh, Beth, you know, what, what you're maybe most looking forward to. I know you, you and your team are going to be in attendance in, in, in person. Um, we talked about, you know, kind of what we, you miss in being in person, but what are you most looking forward to uh, for this upcoming international convention? Oh, wow. Um, well, I will say this. We just came back from that first hybrid event and I'm going to thank Colin and all of the Southeast local coordinators and GMTSS team who honestly went out of their way to put this together, to lead everyone to this. Because here's the thing. I heard it from so many people as well as I know Pip and I talked about it. We we lived three and a half hours away from where it was held. We were like, oh, we'll just watch on Zoom. We've all gotten so used to just, oh, I'll just watch it from Zoom. I can stay home in my, you know, comfy clothes. Until we got there, we did not realize how badly we needed a live event. And so what happened is we had team members who drove in from North Carolina, as well as Florida, to join us there it was it, just to be able to come back together as a team 
And when I say a team, I'm not talking just our own team, but the entire GMTSS team. It was invaluable for people to have conversations like Colin was talking about, being able to introduce somebody to another person and let them do the talking for you. Um, there's just nothing to replace that live. So I'm excited because we have team members that joined us on Zoom for that first hybrid. And quote unquote, I was so jealous that I couldn't be there with you. And so now they're making plans. But here's the thing. You know, we know that finances are tight for a lot of people. We know time off sometimes is really hard for people. We are like, <laughs> we're amazing at putting those pieces together for people because we've been doing this for 24 years. There is, if there is a will, there is a way. Go on a payment plan for the ticket over the next seven weeks. Make arrangements to work it out with your team for, you know, transportation and for room and board and all the other things. There's ways to do this. If, when you hear the stories of what people have done to get to conference who are now national supervising coordinators and above, the stories, it's because they made a commitment and they had a goal and a why and a purpose. And I just, I'm looking forward to being together first and foremost with all of that energy. I know it's gonna be a great event because the, what's the best event? The next event. I've never been to a bad Market America event because the people who bring the stage presence are the people who are building and growing. And as Pip and I always said in other industries that we were in, you were learning from people that nest, that was their job and it wasn't really that exciting to listen to them. This is not our job. This is something that people bring with them, their passion and delivery of what their experiences are in this business. And there's nothing else like it, honestly. Beautifully, I love that. Beautifully said, everything you just said, but the next event's the best event. The best event's the next event. I love that. I haven't heard that before. I'm, originality is always concealing your source. I'm taking that one, Beth. That's good. Uh, Pip, talk to me a little bit. I remember um, the other night I was, on, I was fortunate enough to be on, I guess, the Southeast region, um, meeting or coring that you guys have. And you said something that really stuck with me about um, a two-dimensional experience right. or a three-dimensional experience. Right. Talk to us about that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, Zoom is good as a replacement. If you have to if you use it, it's, it's a great thing. It's a great platform. But when we came out of this event in Tampa Bay, the, the biggest thing was the fact that in Zoom, you're in two-dimensional. You see people, but you can't touch them. The three-dimensional hugging um, at this event, when people hugged and it was heart to heart, you could feel the pulling in and it, there was so much love because there we were all together. And, you know, and it's kind of like a jack in the box. The longer the music goes, the more powerful the spring is of the jack in the box. We haven't been together in, you know, what is it, a year and a half. Right. The, the energy is going to be incredible. Just the, the major events alone have an amazing amount of energy. But you, you take 18 months of not being together with all of us dying to be there. People are going to have to be there. This is going to be one of those events that's going to go down in the history of the company where, they're, where you're either going to say, I was there for it, or I'm sorry, I missed it. And we have seven weeks to make that decision. Are you going to be in or are you going to be out? And, you know, I just think this is, this is the one. And yeah, it's the three-dimensional event. We're all going to be hugging and we're going to see each other in three dimensions. You know, you mentioned something that it reminded me of what JR has been saying recently, just in casual conversations. And I think he said it, we were on, on with, with you guys. And that is, you know, talk about, you know, being a part of history, you know, and being a pioneer, you know, we talk about, you know, I mean, you guys, to a certain extent, are pioneers. You're involved in the very, you know, almost in the beginning, just a few years in. Um, and you remember those times where we feel like we're kind of, not, not beginning again, because it's the next chapter, but that historic kind of moment and feeling and another magic moment, I think will definitely be created at this international convention. Thank you, Pip, well, well said. And Colin, I guess we'll round this out with you. Talk to us about what you're looking forward to uh, for this international convention. Yeah, I'm super pumped just to be around all the people. I mean, that's what, you know, people are what make companies great. You know, the company can't control 
everything. Ultimately, the, the people have to come together and we got to rally together, link arms, no teammates left behind mentality. Because the reality is, is that whether we like it or not, the world around us is very, very fragile at this point. And there can be some doom and gloom and people wanting to automatically buy into the doom and gloom. And we have to focus on being the light in a world of, of some darkness trying to overshadow the light. So I love the fact that we all get to come together and be the light for each and every person who's coming together and making the trek with us to get there. And, and I loved what Beth said when she said, we did whatever it took. I mean, back in the day, stacking people into hotel rooms, and peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and man, just paycheck to paycheck, trying to make a business work. But everybody had belief. We all had to believe in each other. And of course, believe in JR and all of, you know, you guys on the corporate team leading the way for each and every one of us. And, you know, it, it is going to be a magic moment because if any, if what we just did in Tampa uh, is any indication of what it's going to be like, I can tell you this, the, the seminar itself was incredible, but the meeting before with everybody coming together, the meeting after the meeting that night, I think we have like 50 people on on John and Lisa Tolbert's back deck and it was a dance party and and just camaraderie building camaraderie the next day Andrew there's about over 50 of us out on boats and then there was probably another 30 people who aren't boat people that all met on land with the blacks and so I led the boat crew and the blacks led the on on the land crew and and but the bottom line is all of that is a magic moment of a group of entrepreneurs and, and just people wanting better for each other, but willing to challenge each and every one of us to play at a higher level because we can always, all of us, uh, me included, okay, we can all play at a higher level sometimes because we get a little comfortable. And I think sometimes with Zoom, you notice some people got a little comfortable and now we got to challenge each other to play at a higher level while other people took advantage of it and said, I'm going to play at a higher level the whole time on Zoom. And they did. And they busted through some levels and made it happen. So this is the history of the world in business. Some are taking advantage of the opportunity when it rains or a hurricane comes through Florida. Some people are saying, where's the opportunity? And other people are hiding under the bed. So which are you going to be? I would be looking for the opportunity to bless and serve and, and help other people. And that's what it's all about. Beautifully said. I just want to listen. I have nothing else to say. That was, that was, that was well, well said. I just want to thank you, you guys, Beth, Pip and Colin for taking some time tonight. This is kind of a busy night. I think you guys are jumping on another zoom at eight o'clock and I think there's another one at nine o'clock, but um, it's, it's, it's a uh, very special to be, to be part of this community, like you mentioned. And um the camaraderie is going to be there. The energy is going to be there. The magic is going to be there. And the fact that we're all economically connected makes it even that dynamic is something that no other community can, can provide. So um, I hope you guys get lucky and get the golden ticket. Um, you can look forward to the, to the box of goodies and gifts. Um, I think a few weeks before the actual in, uh, convention. And um, it's worth noting that there's also going to be, um, you know, on, on the concourse, and normally there's booths, but that we're taking that to an entirely new level as well. So nonetheless, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening. Thank you for your time. Stay healthy and safe and happy. And we look forward to seeing you in Greensboro, North Carolina, August 26th to 28th at the 2021 International Convention in person, because we're back. Thank you. Thanks, Andrew. Thank you, Andrew. I just wanted you to see feel and hear the enthusiasm of all the entrepreneurs here in this Coliseum so you can understand why the shopping annuity shop.com the unfranchised business is enabling entrepreneurs to take control of their own financial position and future.